Hello, welcome to Granite Paradise. Today we are doing the third video in our series about the different types of rocks and rocks from different places. Today I'm going to talk about the rocks from right here in Fort Collins in the Cache Laputa River. Obviously because it's uh, even walking distance from my house, I have a lot of stuff from there that my family and I have collected or that people have given to me. Uh, I'll try to sum this up. I had to leave out a lot, obviously. Um, I'm going to start with the biggest ones that we've we've collected over the years. Over here, um, let me start off by saying that the Cache Laputa River um, pri primarily brings an assortment of granites and other igneous rocks from the Rocky Mountains, obviously. Um... There are some sedimentary rocks found to date. Uh, most of them have not been very interesting, so I won't actually include them in this video, but there are some nice sandstones and limestones and things of that nature. This piece here kind of works good that the sun is shining through the fence onto it. It's just a nice big piece of quartz. I actually polished it. My wife found this one. We were walking along the river and she saw it out in the water just because it's so bright. And it's nicely rounded all the way around. I'm not going to pick it up because it's heavy. <laughs> it's probably about 30 pounds. I've been uh, tempted to hollow it out on, from the bottom, drill a hole up into it and put a light. But I need about 400 more years of life to be able to do some of these projects. This one here is an interesting, I call it a granite, but it's probably not granite. If any of you are really into geology, I would appreciate your input on some of these. So this is dry. And my son found this, my son Stephen. I think he was like 12 years old when he found it. <laughs> We've hung on to it all these years, but it's just covered with these eyes. And what I'm told is that the crystal in the middle is probably magnetite. Because I guess magnetite crystallizes out fairly early in the process. Whatever the mineral is. So when it crystallized, it pulled out the atoms from the, the, the magma immediately around it. And formed that crystal. And that's why right around it, it's white because... That mineral was depleted out of the the surrounding uh, liquid very interesting I'm probably not using the right terminology and if you wet it of course they show up a little more and this I actually cut it and polished it I'm trying to Remember to move the camera slowly. <laughs> you can see with my hand how big that rock is. It's a nice one. This one here, not very interesting in appearance. It's just big and it's very magnetic. Magnet sticks to it really nicely. This is also from here in the river. Garnets. They show up a little better when wet. Again, this one I actually cut and polished. Okay, and then last but not least of the big boys is, uh, I guess we could call this a unikite. The, the original granite is still intact. It just got fractured and just completely filled with the, the beautiful green. I wish this one was out in the sun right now because it really looks green in the sun. That's probably a 60 pounder or so, maybe more. We actually got that one at a landscape place. They had it in their oversized boulders. Sometimes if you go to your local landscape uh, company, they, they'll sell the big stuff kind of cheap because a lot of people don't want the real big ones because they can't move them. Okay, so those are the, the big ones along the wall. 
Now we'll come over here. I picked these out from different places where I have them displayed, just so I can remember them all. There's a lot that I'm omitting again. I'm going to show them to you dry first and try to explain what little I know. So this, it looks like the white mineral is primarily quartz, maybe some feldspar, and then the mica is beautiful gold-colored biotite, which is basically the black mica that you sometimes see in, in granitic rocks. See if I can get in there close. Very nice crystal structure. It actually looks better dry than wet, but I'll wet it down. Just makes it look black. <laughs> this one here, I believe, is a diorite, which is a relative of granite. It's another intrusive igneous rock. Fairly common, but this one was nice because of how white the white was and how black the black was and, and the crystals the crystals actually have some shape to them a friend and I were walking up on a hillside along the river and he spotted this one down in the water another one of those where you could see it from a mile away <laughs> and then another common one are, this can be granite, sometimes they're sandstone, sometimes they're marble. There seems to be a lot of these rocks with the white veins going through them. And the white veins are kind of the common theme and the rock can really be anything. I like them just because they look good in the yard, but sometimes it's a granite. I found them like with yellow granite, green granite. In fact, that's one rock I'm just now remembering. It's a rock that has these white veins and pink veins and green veins, and I forgot to get it out. Okay, and again, these aren't too exciting. I just have them here to represent. These are actually volcanic rocks. The one in the middle is a really nice porphyry. Probably from a dike, which is where magma pushes up into a dike and finishes cooling. So it came with the larger crystals already formed, and then the, the matrix cooled quickly around it. Those aren't very common here. I think I only have like six or seven of them <laughs> out of 20 years of walking up and down the riverbanks. And this is just a uh, probably a basalt. Not very exciting, but uh, again, I wanted to show it just to, to prove that they're around. These three here are all garnets, rocks that have garnets in them. This one I cut and polished. They're nothing spectacular, it's just interesting, and you can find it in the sand also. This one's really pretty. It's a horn blend schist, I believe. That's what the sparkles are, is the horn blend. And then the garnets. Completely full of gar It's full enough of garnets that it's actually heavy, comparatively speaking. I'm not sure if water does much for you. This one here. These, I have three or four of them. I'm... I'm hoping one of you will leave a comment telling me what it is. I believe the matrix matrix is actually garnet because it's quite purple. And then the green crystals. The green crystals appear to be quartz of some kind because they really don't they really don't reflect. So they're not I don't think they're feldspar. And I wouldn't call it a unikite because, again, the absence of the feldspar and the quartz is just this green material and what appears to be garnet. Part of the reason I'm doing this video is I'm hoping you who know a little more will educate me on, on these. These are just some, uh, I, I guess I would call it a nice, probably a horn blend nice of some kind. They're very common. I just put two here to kind of show what they are. This one is similar. Then this is similar to the unikite, 
Except again, it doesn't have the feldspar. It appears to be just the quartz and the epidote. And it's a, it's a nice big rock. Uh, we found it on a camping trip, actually, up the canyon. <laughs> okay, these here, I lost my spray bottle. There it is. These aren't very exciting uh, at first glance, but when you wet them, they're quartz. They're just uh, milky quartz. But what I like about them is the, uh, the growth striations. Sometimes as the crystals grow, they get these lines in them. And the lines are kind of white. And then the darker portion is just where it's more transparent. And the light penetrates the crystal. Obviously, these have been river-rounded, so they're not really crystals anymore. But they are probably originating from granite pigmentites. And they're very well-rounded, so they must have rolled quite a ways. Now, these here... Lost my spray bottle again appear to be granite because they sparkle they have the feldspar crystals as you can see but they're in various degrees of being replaced with what i believe is hematite again i'm hoping someone can tell me the the actual red mineral has no reflective quality at all it's almost like a, as if it were clay or something and then the chunks that are left left still intact are still granite they have the, the feldspar reflections so if anyone could tell me what these might <clears throat> might be caused by i would appreciate it these are some of my favorites here the one in the back that one is it's called graphic granite, and what it is, it's a single feldspar crystal. And as the crystal grows, it interlaces with quartz. So in this case, the quartz, the quartz is the dark, the dark lines that you see going through, and then the, the main bulk of the rock is um, probably plagioclase feldspar. And if, if I were to take this and move it around in the light, it reflects really nicely. But it's too heavy for me to pick up with one hand. Again, I like the bigger ones. <laughs> and then these in the front are the same thing. Um, granite and probably another type of feldspar. Orthoclase, I believe, is what it's called. And you just get these really nice patterns. They could be mostly quartz, such as this one with almost speckles, red speckles of the feldspar scattered through. This is another one similar to the graphic granite. You could almost see the structure of the feldspar crystals as it grew with the quartz. Very pretty, just because of the color combination. I like them. They look good, they look good in the yard. <laughs> Here's another one I'm hoping somebody can educate me on. So these crystals, again, it's a pretty big rock, but the big green crystals, they're rectangular, they reflect, they're pretty heavy. I don't think they're epidote. I could be wrong. Um, I guess that is a logical conclusion. See here, they're really big. In, in a granitic matrix it is foliated it is layered to an extent and this is the same exact stuff you can see the crystal reflections they're larger crystals but in this case the rock is entirely made of the green it's kind of a grayish green as opposed to the unikite green that you would expect because in unikite the green is really hard and more dense whereas in this material the crystals are larger and it's not that olive green it's a, it's a different green
thoughts and ideas are greatly appreciated on what these might be. <laughs> and these are just some interesting breccias. I call them breccias, but it's actually a granite matrix with these chunks of what appear to be... I'm not even going to say. <laughs> but it, it's definitely igneous. But rather than being filled in with um, magma, as, a, as, a, as in a volcanic breccia, these were, were deep underground when they were formed. You can tell the background has large crystals. These are common, but pretty. Just uh, granite pegmatites full of mica, muscovite mica in these cases. And I did a video the other day about unikite, which is where we'll, we'll close here on these. In fact, I showed a few of these in the video. So I will not discuss unikite again. Um, basically, it's a granite that went through some metamorphism and the plagioclase feldspars were replaced with epidote. Very pretty stuff. There's a lot of it here. This may or may not be unikite. Those veins are kind of green, but um, the structure is quite different. I'll just dip that in the bucket. Okay, and there's still a lot more rocks we can talk about. <laughs> we'll leave that for another day. Thank you for joining us. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.